Hi, I'm Jake Spicer. In this fifth and final video in our series, we'll be looking at hatching and cross-hatching, taking the face as our main subject. Let's dive right in. So firstly, materials. I'm going to be using the 3B graphic pencil from the Shade and Tone set and the Derwent Drawing Terracotta. We're going to be looking at hatching and cross-hatching today. So just to start off with a few examples of hatching, um, here's just a really simple demonstration of diagonal hatching being used. Hatching is basically lots of lines built up to suggest tone, tonal value in some way. So I've just made some really simple little drawings of spheres and I'm just adding a little bit of tonal value to them using hatched marks. I'm also going to use an eraser just to pick out a few little areas of light and I'm building up darker tone through extra layers of hatching so just building up hatching in the same direction. In this second sphere I'm just using some vertical hatched marks so marks going straight down applying a little bit more pressure to achieve a darker tone. It's worth playing around with different directions of hatching to see which you enjoy using most. There's no right or wrong way to apply it um, but different directions of hatching are going to have slightly different visual effects even when they represent the same values of tone. Sometimes it helps to have drawn out all of these tonal shapes first and you can find examples of those kind of tonal shape maps um, in last week's video. In this final sphere I'm just using some horizontal mark making, some horizontal hatched lines to suggest tone in the same way. The eraser is a really valuable tool here. It's a way of picking light out of dark and it's one of the advantages of using a graphite pencil rather than say a pen to make these hatch marks that we can use the eraser to either clean up the edges of some of the hatching or bring a little bit of light back into the drawing. Now when we combine several different directions of tone that's called cross hatching so several different directions of hatching one over another um, so this starts off with a little bit of diagonal hatching first followed by some vertical hatching and then a little bit of horizontal hatching um, so a crossed hatched sphere and where you get the build up of different directions of hatched marks you'll get a slightly darker tone. In this next example I'm going to add a little bit of tonal value to a cylinder. So I'm going to start off in the same way, a little bit of diagonal hatching followed by some vertical hatching over the top and that's just suggesting some shapes of light and dark to describe the form of the cylinder. I'd also like to look at some cross contour, that is marks that follow the direction of the surface of the cylinder itself. Um, to help you imagine that we have to think about firstly what contour is, the actual physical outline of the object and what a cross contour might be, something that joins one contour and another. We could imagine it by drawing lines across a loo roll tube. Just think about how by turning that tube in different directions we could see that the surface is inclined in different directions as well. So if we make our hatch marks in the direction of the cross contour, it helps to describe the form of the object as well as describing the shapes of light and dark. So we're being really efficient with our mark making there, describing tonal value at the same time as tapping in to the surface of the subject itself. We can also think about the vertical direction of the tube itself and it's helpful to actually think about the surface behind the tube, the kind of wall behind, actually having a vertical character as well. The reason that those cross contour marks are so valuable is that we can start with the same contour drawing, in this case two imaginary simplistic twigs, and by making cross contour marks in one direction suggest that the twig is kind of coming towards us and by making cross contour marks in the opposite direction suggests that it's moving away from us in some way, tilting away from us. Finally, in today's video we're also going to explore textural marks, marks that describe the texture of a surface and tap into our sense of touch as well as our sense of observation. So I'm just playing with some of those marks here on the page. 
So let's launch into this week's portrait drawing. I'm going to start with a drawing of my friend Joe here and we're just going to start off with a really simple contour drawing just feeling our ways around the shape of Joe's head and then starting to map some of the shapes of light and dark, a kind of tonal map on Joe's face. This is similar to week three of our five week course. So I'm just mapping out shapes of light and dark across Joe's face. I'm not trying to put in too many construction lines first, I'm just trying to observe shape by shape the tonal values of Joe's face, particularly trying to map out the darker tonal values and making sure that I'm paying attention to how hard the edges are around those tonal shapes. Again, you'll be able to look back a couple of weeks at our previous YouTube videos um, to find out how to make one of those tonal maps yourself. I'm just starting off in the terracotta, partly because it's a lovely colour to start with. It sits really nicely underneath the graphic um, graphite pencil that I'll be using in a second, and it just adds a certain amount of warmth to the portrait overall. So it's a really nice pencil to use for doing a little bit of underdrawing. If we were taking a different approach to the tonal values this week, I could be mapping some of this out, then adding some of the water-soluble media over the top, and then finishing the drawing off with a little bit of line over the top just to further emphasise some of the shapes and tones. But we're going to stay with dry media today and just focus on hatching and cross-hatching. So I'm starting off by filling in some of those tonal shapes that were mapped out in the terracotta pencil um, with the graphic 3B graphite pencil. So these are all hatch marks in one direction. The reason I'm starting in one direction is just because it's quick and simple. And it's often better than a scribble because I've got a lot more control of the, over the direction of those marks and that allows me to put in blocks of tone really quickly and efficiently. Now as I'm starting to get into a little bit more detail and starting to look with a little more focus at some of the darker shapes of Joe's face, I'm making marks in the direction of the surface of skin. So this is tapping into the idea of the cross contour, of the idea of a mark which traces over the direction of a surface on somebody's face. It helps to describe both the darker tones of the face, but also to say something about the surface of that face. So trying to actually look at Joe and imagine him as a three-dimensional human being actually sitting there in front of us. It's often easier to do from life when you actually have somebody sitting in front of you. From a photograph, we can extrapolate some of that form. And it helps to create a drawing that has a slightly more three-dimensional quality. It also allows us to put cross-hatched marks over the top of the initial diagonal hatching with a little bit of intention. It's not just mapping light and dark, it's mapping light, dark and saying something about the surface of the face. Now once we get into hair and beard hair, my pencil's actually blunted a little bit and I'm using that deliberately as an advantage to make broader marks that are made in the direction of the hair itself. So it's tapping into a sense of the texture of that hair as well as its direction and its tonal value. So trying to be as efficient as possible with the mark making. I'm playing around with different pressures of mark making, making a heavier mark where I want the um, tonal uh, variation to be a little bit darker and where I want to make a more confident mark for the hair. And I'm also using an eraser to bring in a little bit of light over the top of some of those darker marks. I've then sharpened my pencil up and I'm coming in to bring a little bit more clarity to some of the finer features and I'm going to bring some of the terracotta back in to bring a little bit more warmth into the drawing. I'm still using hatched marks so rather than just scribbling away I'm trying to lift my mark up every time I make it so that each line has real intention to it. That doesn't mean that I'm working slowly, this is a speeded up video but it's still a relatively short drawing but I'm trying to make sure that every single line has a purpose and that its direction communicates as much as possible about the subject so the idea of surface texture, the idea of the surface having direction as well as the idea that the surface has tone and a little bit of colour to it, a little bit of warmth to it. 
Now, it's always really important that you take these exercises and you adapt them to your own needs. It's always best to think of these marks as a visual vocabulary. They're a way of describing what you see in front of you and you should adapt that vocabulary to your own use. So just think about how you can use hatching, cross hatching and marks that follow the cross contour of the surface that you're drawing as well as marks that describe a sense of texture um, in your own drawings and just think about how you can borrow from and adapt the marks that I've been playing with there. You could also combine this with wet media particularly from the shade and tone pan set that we explored in the last video um, to create drawings that start off perhaps with a map of tonal shapes then work into some wet media then once you've allowed that to dry you might want to bring a little bit of surface texture over the top with the graphic pencil or the terracotta drawing pencil. Thanks so much for watching today. If you share any drawings that you've made from these videos on social media do tag me and Derwin in any of your posts it's always really nice to see what you've made. And if you haven't watched the other videos in this series, have a look in the description below and you should be able to find links to all of them. Enjoy your drawing.